What is going on everybody and welcome to part 8 of the web development in Python with Django tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is working on the logout and log in uh, views and pages and all that. So let's get started. So where we left off, uh, we are actually to the point where we've created a user and just incidentally logged that user in uh, because they registered. But what we need to also have as an option is that person to be able to log in at a later date as well as to be able to log out. So uh, let's get to it. So the easiest thing for us to code first would be the logout just because it's so simple. You don't even need a view for it. So uh, the first thing we'll do is head to urls.py and uh, we will add another path here and I'm going to call this path logout. And then here we'll just say that uh, corresponds to views.logout underscore request. Um, so, and then I'll give it a name real quick, uh, logout. <clears throat> so we wouldn't want to call that just that function because this is views, you know, views.py and this is the function name. We wouldn't want to call that logout because in Django we're going to literally import log out and actually I think we've already imported it let's let's take a peek right so same reason why uh, when we do log in it's gonna have to be like login request or, or something like that uh, because if you just use that you're gonna override that that function you wouldn't want to do that so uh, now what we're gonna do is create the logout uh, view I think I think initially I might have said you don't need a view my mistake if I said a view, uh, template <laughs> is what I meant. You're not gonna need a template. Anyway, logout request, because all you're gonna use is Python logic here. You don't actually have to show the user anything. I must've been thinking, I just woke up, my apologies. So, and for the record, it is not 9.18 a.m. It's actually 7.18 a.m. <laughs> I'm on a VM. Anyways, uh, request, uh, continuing along, log. So all we need to do when someone hits that logout request is log them out, right? So first we'll just log out, <clears throat> request. So it will log this user out uh, here uh, based on that uh, that we're importing. So super simple, right? Though probably the next thing you'd want to do is maybe alert them to this so messages.info and then don't forget to pass request and logged out successfully and then um you could either use like javascript i suppose to just dynamically boop them out uh and show that they've been logged out or we could just return uh redirect and I'm just going to say main homepage, probably. Uh, it would be nice. I actually don't know what code you would need, but surely there's like some sort of code in all of Django to refresh current page. So it'd be nice if you could just like log them out and then refresh that page. And then if that's a page that requires login, like what if they're viewing their account page to hit log out, then redirect them to a homepage or something like that. I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so here we are, homepage. Uh, we've coded everything we should need, so let's go ahead and hit log out. Uh oh. Uh, log out didn't match any of them. Did I screw it? Did I not? Maybe I just didn't save. I think that's all it was. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Really? What? <clears throat> Do I forget a comma, possibly? I sure did. <laughs> this is a... Uh, what a great morning. Okay, now log out. Boom. Logged out successfully, and as we can see, we've it's changed to register and log in. <clears throat> but we hit log in, and gosh darn it, we can't log in. So... Uh, that's the next thing that we need to do. So I'm just going to come over here. Uh, we'll add path. We will add login. And we will do views.login re request. And the name will be 
log in. Let's add that trailing comma for it hits me again. And some people are going to be annoyed probably by that. Then we will come to views. Uh, we will define login request requ request. Okay, now what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to uh, authenticate. So we've got the user creation form. Uh, the next thing that we need is the authentication form. Uh, again, for the record, I feel like somewhere in this series, maybe towards the end, we need to like custom build our own form because so far we've been able to like import all of these forms um, because they're just already, these are just such common tasks that it's already been done. But eventually you'll probably need to know how to make your own form. So probably towards the end, we'll do that. And people have been requesting a whole bunch of other things too, like Django REST framework, stuff like that, that really, I don't really have a need for that, that I can tell yet for this website, but um, definitely something I am curious to cover just because so many people are asking about it. Anyways, uh, just know you, you can build your own forms. Uh, <laughs> anyway, authentication form, we bring that in. So uh, now that we have that, we're going to say form equals authentication form, and then return render, and we need to render uh, request again this I'm not going to use the names anymore uh, and then the template name will be main <clears throat> login.html and then finally we will have uh, form form uh, is form okay so now we need this login.html which we do not have so we're going to go in the main um, I'm just going to copy and paste register to be honest. Login. Let's open that up. Okay, so it's basically going to be the same thing. Rather than register, we should say login. If you uh, don't already have an account, <laughs> register. Register. I don't know. <clears throat> Good enough. Okay, so that should be good enough. Uh, now what I want us to do is, do we have the URLs? We do. So URLs, login request, points to our views, login form, and login.html should be all set. We should at least get the form. We still can't log in yet, but let's refresh the page. Sure enough, we get a username and we get password. Uh, so now what we have to do is same thing for register. We can fill out this form and we could hit log in, but nothing's going to happen because we're not handling for when the method is a post request. So just like with the registration, the bulk of the code is going to be involved if the method is a post. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, copy that. Boop. Come on down here. And we're going to get ready uh, for the login request. So if the request method equals post, we're going to say form is, again, an authentication form uh, with request and then request.post. Pot. <laughs> Lovely. So uh, here, request is just always passed. I don't know if I request.post. Um, I'm not really sure we talked about this. This would just be your data though. This is just so it knows what data is like for that form. Whoops, like that. Actually, since that's a parm, it probably doesn't have spaces. Anyways, that's what that parameter is. I think that's pretty obvious. So once we have, uh, so we've got the form here with the information and then if form dot, and then again, is valid, what we want to grab is the username. That's going to be something. And we want to get the password. That's going to be something. Because because when someone logs in, we have to be able to authenticate that user. So here is where we're going to use authenticate. And if everything's hunky-dory, we could log them in. So coming on down here, uh, username, that will be uh, form dot get get clean. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not it. Form.cleaned data. Yes. 
Uh, and then the field name in this case is username. So that's kind of what I mean. Uh, right now, this is kind of black boxy because you're like, I don't know what, 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 what I would put through here, but this is the field name. So, uh, you know, if we were to open up the code for authenticate form, for example, it's got multiple fields, well, two, username, password. And so, uh, and then it has the name of that field. Like if you're gonna build that field out in, let's say HTML, you would have that name and that you would do the same thing to get that uh, parameter. Anyways, uh, so that's username form dot cleaned, clean data. We're also going to grab the password and then we're gonna say user equals authenticate and we want to authenticate based on uh, username, password. Then, uh, if user is not none, then we will log in uh, request user. Then uh, we'll say messages.info request and success. Actually, let's just take this exact message. Uh, this one, Boop -doo. Uh, bang. So you are now logged in as whatever your username was. So then we're gonna return a redirect. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna take this one. Again, it might be interesting to return a redirect to uh, whatever page they're currently on, just now they would be logged in. That would probably be a better way. If someone knows what that is, uh, I wonder if we could just like Google that real quick. Like <laughs> what would be the current page? Get current URL Django, or maybe rip, how to get the current URL. I don't want the template. I'd say, eh. that's why I figured they were gonna have template get, uh, let's say, redirect, redirect to current URL Django. Oh, <laughs> so could I just redirect straight to, I'm curious. Although, like, there would be so many ways you'd wanna handle that because like if they're, they're already logged in, right? You wouldn't wanna redirect them to the login page and stuff like that, but anyway, Sounds like you could just return a redirect, period, and that will be the current page. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it, <laughs> we'll keep it there for now, but anyway, I didn't really think about that. Most of the time, at least with our app, you're gonna be on, on the login page or registration page, so we're gonna redirect you. Uh, the only one really would be log out. We'd almost wanna like redirect them to that page, but even log out sends them to that URL. You'd really only want to use that if you were using some other authentication methods, and I'm not going to do that for now. But you could use like JavaScript to log in and log out on any page on your entire website and not actually need a slash login log out that they navigate to. Anyway, not worried about that right now. Else, return uh, messages.error. So if the user basically is none, something went wrong, request. And then we're just gonna say invalid username or password, right? Those are the only two fields, so something went wrong. So that is if, <clears throat> whoa, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, okay, thank you, Stefan, for your uh, support. That always like just scares me. Anyway, um, where was I? Uh, so messages error. So anyway, this is if the uh, if the something is wrong in the actual form. The other uh, thing is, uh, or rather, this something is wrong with the data we input. Now we also could handle for if the form itself is invalid. So maybe they didn't enter something there or whatever. Uh, in that case, I'm just going to error the exact same thing. Um, there's really only like. There's no good reason why when someone logs in, something goes wrong other than there's it's something is wrong. There's an invalid username or password, or maybe someone's doing something else that they shouldn't be up to. Uh, either way, we'll just return invalid username or password. That's fine. Okay, so then um, we should be all set. So we actually now should have like a login. Cool. 
Um, yeah, so let's check that. <clears throat> let's make sure that works. Okay, log in. Uh, to be honest with you guys, ugh, I don't even remember. Let's try Centex 4 and see. <laughs> let's see if that logs us, if we can log in under that account. No. Dicked object, not callable. Ooh, this is an interesting one. I uh, have, have yet to see this issue. Honestly, I have no idea what, what we're... <clears throat> something in views, it looks like. Possibly... Do, do, do. What did I mess up? Oh, login request line 43. Let's just head there. Hmm. Hmm. What have I done? Surely I don't have to say request equals request. I don't think that would be required. Uh, okay, I see what it is. <clears throat> okay, so dot clean data dot get dot get. Again, on any other form, you would say the same thing. You would say dot get. You probably wouldn't have a dot clean data. I don't think such a thing exists when you're grabbing form data from just typical HTML, but you could write code that would do such a thing for you. Anyway, we have to get the values that were uh, placed in there. So dot get, and I bet we did a dot get. Uh, yeah, here. So my mistake. I forgot that. Hopefully, hopefully we didn't error out there. Let's just refresh. Let's see if we can. I don't. Mm, I don't want to send the same data. So let's try uh, sent dex four, and then we'll put in the password. <gasps> okay. Authenticate takes zero to one positional arguments. Why you gotta give me such a hard time here? <laughs> um, pretty sure that's legitimate. Let's uh, let's just try user name equals username, password equals password. Refresh. I'm just gonna resubmit the form, and we're logged in. Fascinating. Okay. I wonder... Um, I'm curious to see what, what are the initial arguments there and why that wouldn't have worked. Django Authenticate. Django Authenticate. Ugh, come on. Why wouldn't you... Here, let's try this then. I just want to see what the initial parameters are. Authenticate for that. <clears throat> so hopefully I can just do this. Authenticate. Uh, hopefully I didn't just zoom right by it. Oh, wait. Let's go. How do I go back up to this? I want to read this. Request and then the credentials. Okay. So the. Okay. I see what's saying. All right. Okay. So you'll have to give the names uh, there. That's interesting. So I wonder if you could extend authenticate to do all kinds of cool things for you to, to like validate form inputs. That's, I suppose that's why that's there. Anyway, <laughs> so don't forget to say literally username and password. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so I think the, I don't know how much time I've been jibber jabbering to you guys. But I would like to do one more thing, and that is extend um, one of our forms. So in, um, so like for example, you I was saying how you could create your own form entirely, or you can just kind of change forms. So for example, and oftentimes, you'll probably find that you're gonna change certain forms. So for example, authentication form. Maybe there's a few more things you wanna authenticate. Um, and then in user creation form, maybe there's some more um, fields that you want, you know, that your model is willing to accept. So you want some more fields. Um, stuff like that. You can extend forms, <clears throat> but you could also make your own form if you wanted. So what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to extend user creation forms. So the way that we do that, first of all, uh, we'll go into main. And I'm just going to copy and paste really any of these. And I'm just going to call it forms. So we just need to create a forms.py. So if we go into main, 
Uh, and then, <laughs> you'll be blind for a moment. Here we go, four stop by. Cool. So uh, I'm just gonna delete everything here and we're gonna start fresh. So what I wanna do is from Django, we're gonna import forms. Uh, then what we want to do is from django.contrib.auth.forms, we want to import that user creation form. That's the one that we've been using. From django.contrib, um, ooh, I'm trying to decide if we actually need, yeah, we do. Okay, django.contrib.auth.models, we want to import the user model. So in this case, the form already exists and the model already exists. It's not our model, it's Django's model that created, that they created, but it's not that much different than our own model. And later, we could also, just like we're extending this form, we could extend the user model, add more fields to the user model and so on. But uh, to see all the fields, for example, uh, we could just go to slash admin here. Log in and uh, click on one of the users here. And you can see here, I mean, we've got first name, last name, email address, uh, and then they've got like some sort of groups and, and permissions capability that's already been given uh, to users. Also date joined, last login. Okay, those lots of fields already exist here, but if you wanted to add more, you could. So for example, one of the things I wouldn't mind adding is like a Discord username or something like that. But like I was saying before, <clears throat> not really sure I would want to add that to the user model. Probably would be its own little model, just related to the user model. Anyway, so once we have these things, uh, I'm going to say class, and I'm going to call it new user form, and this will inherit <clears throat> from the user creation form. And then we're going to say there's an email field, and that's going to be forms.email field. Uh, and then... We're gonna say that is now required equals true. So the form will not be submittable. You will not be able to registrate without, uh, registrate? <laughs> register without supplying an email. Why would we wanna do this? Well, we wanna do this because if people uh, join uh, and then later they forget their password, we need some way to help them recover their password. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna send them an email uh, to help them recover it. So now, uh, class meta model is based on user, no, user. And then uh, fields here uh, for this will be, oops, uh, username, email, and then uh, password one. Password one and password two. So this is exactly the same form as before. We're just injecting one more uh, field there, which is email. Then uh, define save. So when the form gets saved, self commit equals true. And then user is going to be equal to super new u new user form self dot save commit here false then user dot email the new thing that we're just now adding user dot email is going to be equal to self dot cleaned data whatever happened to be in that email uh, field there if commit we're going to say user.save oops and then when we're all done we return that user hopefully i did that right let me uh confirm and compare before we uh screw something up here <clears throat> so just for the record, uh, we're, we're committing based here, like dot .save, <coughs> because we want to be able to use that dot .save uh, logic that we've been using up to this point. By default, when we call dot .save, yes, we want to commit that data. That's the real, you know, SQL commit. That's the real way we save things in SQL. Um, but Django kind of helps us abstract that away to a more friendly term called save. If we call dot .save, yes, we want to commit it. 
but we don't want to commit it at this point. We're just going to save it. Then we're going to modify uh, that email value that up to this point we haven't been modifying. Then we want to save the user, which means then we're going to input that data into the database. Cool. So we've got that. Now what we want to do is head back on over to views and um, rather than user creation form, I'm going to actually delete user creation form from the imports because I want to throw an error if we try to use it anywhere. And instead what we want to do is from dot forms, we want to import that new, uh, what was the name of that? New user form? Yeah, new user form. So now we want to use new user form. Then we're just going to copy and uh, paste basically the replacement. So rather than user creation form, paste. And then one more down here. Cool. OK, so now let me go to our home page. We're going to hit log out. Great. We hit register. Let's do syntax 10. <clears throat> uh, hskinsley at gmail.com. You can put anything in there as long as it's like a at something.com. Hit register. New account created. Syntax 10. Cool. So it looks like that account is all set. We could hit log out. Cool. Everything's working up to this point. Let's head on over to admin. Log into our admin user. And users. Let's check out Syntax 10. Sure enough, the only user with an email address. Okay. I think. Um, I think that's it. I, I think I'm content with our users now. <clears throat> At some point, we definitely do need to have a recover password, stuff like that. We, we can possibly get there at some point. But now what I want to do is head back towards tutorials, the actual functionality of this website, because that gets a little more complicated when it comes to our models. And then we, we need to, like right now, these tutorials are so short. So the whole tutorial could, could can fit on one page. It's fine. But eventually, that's not how it's going to work, right? We're going to have way too many tutorials for the front page. So then we are like, OK, well, we could organize by playlist. Well, we have too many playlists. Uh, then we're like, OK, OK, we get organized by category. OK, well, a category and playlist are both going to be their own model entirely. Uh, so now we need to figure out how to how to kind of interact between models and all that stuff. So that starts getting kind of hairy because uh, that can get confusing pretty quickly. And like, how do we start actually interacting between two different models, which is really actually two different database tables uh, and all that. So I think a lot of people find that to be confusing. So that's the next thing, uh, or at least that's the next kind of topic that we're going to start covering is how can we have multiple models and interact with them and all that. So anyways, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.